Um, very good. Okay, uh, welcome everyone. I'm sorry for the delay in starting the lecture and I hope that most people have been able to join. And um, we are also recording this uh, for those who maybe haven't been able to get the link. Um, so as part of the BIFPA Festival 22, and as part of the Alternative Art College activities during the period of strike, um, I'd like to welcome Joachim Stampe from Sweden. Um, Joachim Stampe is a performance artist, has been making performances uh, since the 1990s, as far as I'm aware. And uh, Joachim was born in Sweden, lives in Sweden, lives in Gothenburg. And he's been making performance art works over the world from Asia, North and South America, Europe as well. Um, uh, I've met him a few places over the time, you know, over the years, uh, different countries, Sweden and China, etc. And um, I know in his work that he kind of works quite politically, makes very powerful kind of visual statements. And he kind of fuses ephemeral aspects with, with art objects and painting with performance uh, using uh, materials like earth, wind, air, fire, um, imagery, political imagery, um, works with stones, um, books, a whole range of materials and very inventive. Um, and he's kind of interested in the idea of giving away art or making artwork available to everyone free, um, which he feels is quite a con controversial aspect of making work in society today, um, which goes against this idea of consumption and, and capitalism, really. So in 20, uh, 2006, Joachim Stamp, along with his brother Jonas Stamp, set up a live action Gothenburg, um, which is an influential uh, festival as well uh, for performers art. So without any more ado, Joachim, um, I'd like to hand over to you and uh, best wishes with the, the talk. Hmm. Thank you, thank you. Is it okay to sound from here? Yep. Yes. Great. Now, but uh, thank you for having me. And um, uh, <laughs> and for the introduction. So I, I I have a lot of photos. So let's let's go into that. And if I swear, I will also apologize already from now if I have a bad word. So don't don't uh, take offense. It's it's my bad English that will grasp some words that is maybe more powerful. So, Aisling, you can just uh, click forward. So I'm just going to take my, um, about my background, where I come from, artistically. I had two parents uh, who was uh, artist, and this is my mother standing uh, beside her paintings that he was doing. And hey, yeah. And also, I, I also now when I heard a little voice there, uh, please interrupt if there is something, because I don't have a script, I don't need to go through that. So just say, hey, you are Kim, wait a minute, and then you can, can, can ask a question. I have no problem with that. But uh, this anyhow is my mother, uh, and, and I come from a very contrast, con uh, strong contrast art. My parents was working uh, with the landscape, which they called bread art, that put the food on the table, and then they were making this... Uh, harsh uh, political and social work. Uh, you can click again. Next uh, shot. You can go back to the one before. I, so, I, so, so this was my parents. They were making exhibitions for um, uh, the dockers in, in Gothenburg. So this is me um, skipping school, helping them to, to put up their art outside the, the dockers uh, house in, in Gothenburg. So we put them outside. And I was kind of uh, skipping school and then the, the team was there and taking a show. And I just found this uh, photo before for coming here. And, and then the teacher said, hey, you said you were sick. I saw you on television when you were helping your parents. And, and so this is a little bit my background. And this is also maybe explaining why 
me and my brother felt it was so important to bring out performance in the public space, which we have done. You can click again, Aisling. That's my father, he's also there, um, beside me on the right. So this is my father's work. This is, he, he made this with a small ink uh, pencil uh, from his, uh, he was working at this uh, Swedish factory uh, and was kind of uh, uh, showing how it was to work there. And he, he, was, a, he was a favorite artist from a, a kind of high social democratic politician. They became friends and then they had a bust up. So, so after that, my parents for almost 30 years couldn't show art uh, in, in our city because he was very powerful. So that is my artistic background. That's why I, I, I see that my art also have this kind of harsh, uh, um, harder contrast in, in, in the, its motive or, or how to do it. You can click again. Ne okay, I say next. <laughs> next, I think. Yeah, it's... It's another, take, go back one click, please. It's just a little shitty numbers, but we, we, since we started, me and my brother in Sweden, it was a totally empty performance room. So we didn't have any older, older people to ask, how should we do, what can we do? So we, and that was good in one sense, because we could a little bit do what we, what we wanted. It was no rules. It was no uh, uh, elderly people who said, no, no, you cannot do like that. So we, we, on good and bad, went into this room and made a little bit. So this is, we, we, we have, this year we will have the 17 edition. So, so, um, uh, and we work, we, we always ask the artists to do one outdoor performance in the public space in exactly the city center where all different classes are meeting in the, in the hub of, of Gothenburg. And then we want them to make one work in the, in the white box. So that is what we ask the artist to do. Okay, next. Yeah, so this is, uh, I think Stein Henningsen had been here. So this is how, how it's working in the city center. It's where all the people are out walking at lunch. Uh, I'm actually standing there. I see myself there in a green and yellow shirt uh, telling the ambulance to not take away the, the person who is sitting with his feet in cold water, not answering people. So they, the, the audience uh, called for an ambulance. Uh, uh, and it's not that they are coming up to us, but it's it's have engaging people a lot They They are, we have had a lot of this kind of uh, things. And his stain, he came down with the ice uh, that he brought from the glacier and, and put in his car and drove down from Trump down to Gothenburg. And um, so this is something that we like to do. We like to put it in front of people. So there, there is no this kind of audience we really like to work with. Okay, next. Same thing, a public space, letting them out there and people are surprised over seeing what is this going, what is going on. So me, my work in this case is that I'm kind of a space manager and I'm talking, I'm trying to explain what they are because we don't, you know, there is something in Sweden, if you don't answer a question, people are getting really offended. So that is what, what we have volunteered for me to do. Okay, next. <clears throat> I'm not so much uh, telling who is on the image uh, uh, of the artist. This is also the same, same um, area. And this was good also because uh, the artist here with Alistair and Jason and, and uh, Klassen, they just shut off the area. They were used to, to work with, with people. So they, they kind of make their zone so people didn't walk in or out. Next.
And when I was going through this, I also saw, I found many photos with artists, performance artists stopping traffic. And, and so, so this is also something that I'm running around and see. And, and the good artists, they can do that without, you know, they see when, when the driver or people are getting angry. So they can kind of the experience to see when are they getting angry and go a little further and then go, go away. So this is, and this is the hub of Gothenburg where all the trams are, are crossing from the suburb, from the hard district, from the upper class area. And people are in here to, to go to shopping and or just hang around. Next. Stopping traffic. Uh, some cars tried to almost run her over, uh, Elvira, but it was kind of, um, she was good in this reading, reading the, 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 the faces from people. So this, I, I think I have 10 artists who have been stopping traffic, which I myself never uh, dared to do actually in my own city. Next. And it's also, how to, I mean, you can also, I can also see, we can also learn, because I think that when the first time we started our festival, we were the nutty, crazy people. Second year, they were asking, when is the crazy people coming? The third year, they were asking, when is the artist coming? So I think that when you're working in the public space, you really educate uh, the audience or the people, uh, and, and, and they start to, to see that this is something they really don't, they don't, and, and it's a lot of discussion. So for some years we had volunteers who had some kind of cards that they could give to people who get very pro provoked or, or angry or, or uh, because this is our mission that we really need to have the artists feeling safe when they're on the public space because you are so, you can be vulnerable and you can also be very strong. This is not the role for doing it uh, in, the, in the public space. Okay, next. Next image, uh, I think. Uh, this is also this thing that I mean. Yeah, go back one, please. I, I uh, normally I can do this myself clicking, but now we, we have this uh, technical, so, so excuse us for that. This was also a memorable place where people, the man and woman created small islands and was spitting for, on each other for two hours. And this was one of those actions that I really had to calm people down who said, you are doing this, you are doing that. How can the man spit on the woman? And why the hell is she spitting on him? Can, she can be his daughter, blah, blah, blah. So it, it's very interesting to hear that conversation, what is going on in people's head when they are, when they are encounter these this actions that we are, are making in, in the public space. And in Sweden, we, we only, when I'm making the application, I just have to say that the artist cannot make fire and they cannot have sharp objects, then you can do anything. So it's, uh, it's um, you can be nude as long as you have the permit, permission, it's no problem with that. We have this uh, drug addict, ex-drug addict who has some kind of Christian rock band that was playing and they, they complained and said, how can you let this naked woman be playing songs for God and how can you let her out here? pissing in, in God's direction. And then a policewoman said, but what about Eve in paradise? Wasn't she naked? And then they, mm. okay, next image. You can hear that I'm blabbing away a little bit. Uh, so so um, yeah, let me let that be. This, I, I, because I heard it was uh, going to be not only performance yes. um, students, but also uh, other, art students. <clears throat> so I want to show how, how my process is still going, how I'm getting inspired and how I'm working. So next, please. When I see this image of uh, Wolf Vostel, 
I was intrigued immediately I, because I couldn't really find the text about it. I couldn't know what is he doing. So I wanted to, so I let my imagination go away, run around and, and uh, then I for a year wanted to work with this watch, the time, the, the, the time measurements. So next please. So I ask uh, some of my friends if they can donate me a, a watch and for one year I was making actions that always involved uh, the, the watches, not, not for a special reason, but it, there was something interesting that always uh, uh, crossed my mind that, that when we are now spending one minute together here on this lecture, we are not spending one minute together. We are spending one minute each, so maybe it's 10 or 15 or 20 minutes at the same time. And that is something that I like. So, so. and from this, next please. <coughs> yeah, next again, please. Too many photos here, I can you crazy. So then I, I'm also painting. So, so what I did then was that then, then I took, after I used the, the watch, wristwatch, I started to, to work with them in my paintings. And uh, my paintings that I have here is made of black rubber. It's, uh, and the black rubber I, I got in touch with when I was making a performance uh, that I, I had this idea that I liked uh, the idea of getting inside my art. So I wanted to, like Fontana, cut a, a hole and walk into my uh, work, into my art. And, and the really good thing to do that with was with rubber. Next, please. So here I, I made a cut in this, uh, this canvas, rubber canvas, and I, I took my my white flag and went inside the art. And then I started to really love that black, black matte, black uh, rubber, uh, what, is, what also stands for where you're getting it, the history of rubber. Mm -hmm. And next, please. And you see the, 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 the rubber close after me. So it, it's, it can be an object, the material can be an object after the, the, uh, the use. If you do this with a normal canvas, it <laughs> scratch up with my, when my big fat body goes through it, it destroys the canvas, but not the rubber. Next, please. So then when I, when I got the rubber, I like to work with it. I really like to, uh, to stretch it. And, and I, I also like to surprise people in my work, in my actions. So, so here was a solid looking solid table. And then I could cut, cut, uh, pre, cut open the rubber to climb into the, the, the pre-made holes in the, in the, in the table. So, so this is something I like to, to, I like to see that when, when like in performance art, many times I really like when you don't know what happens next around the corner, so to speak. Next, please. So this is also what I'm painting with now. I want to make art that is having that can, the, the, I would love to have flowers uh, growing up and covering what I'm doing. And it's also very strong for, for doing that. So from that I made this, uh, this uh, rubber performance, now I'm also working with the, the, the paintings. So one thing lead to another and lead to another. And, and I really, I'm happy now when I have kind of had my performance and my uh, object work or crossing each other. So it's, it's, um, it's very fruitful for me. I, I think that sometimes it comes over into, <coughs> sorry, uh, to, to um, it gives me something to, to uh, work those over. Uh, next, please. I also love, I also for a long time uh, uh, loved the bottle, the meaning of the bottle. 
uh, not only for as a container, but also when I was a kid at that time, we didn't have mail. So you, you dreamt of throwing out the bottle uh, uh, to, to send to some unknown person. And I was reading, I love to see these pirate uh, movies when the, you, you find an old bottle with a, with a treasure map and stuff like that. So, so I'm, I'm this I worked with when I was more working with, uh, with um, my object art. I was already discovering and trying to see what the fuck is going on with bottles, why I'm interested in that. And also us men who is, uh, I mean, we are, are, are I don't know how, how it is here, but in Sweden, when, when you have sorrow, when you are going down, you, we, we talk to the bottle and, and uh, get uh, uh, some comfort from, from alcohol and stuff. So I'm interested in all these things uh, with it. Next, please. So, yeah. And also the bottle has, I discovered that you can, the, the object, when you fill a bottle with water, it becomes something else. It becomes small stuff can be big and, and changing format, especially in the round. This is uh, normal olive bottles that I, I um, bought. Next, please. So then after my work with the bottle, I started to use it in my performance. So this is a performance that takes, this perform action takes like 45 minutes uh, with pouring in uh, wine into my eyes and taking it down and looking at people and, and uh, uh, so I think that my idea is my, my uh, how to say, um, uh, my bad English, uh, the, it's, it, my idea is of bouncing between the, the, my object art, what I'm doing in my studio and my actions. And I really like that. I really let them bounce back and forth to do this. Uh, totally not <laughs> important information, but expensive wine doesn't hurt that much as sheep wine. Next, please. Yeah. Next, please. Uh, next, please. I also interested in flags and I found this just because for, I, you can go back one more. Please. Thank you for your, your work there, Isling. It's good. Uh, it's not easy to do what you're doing. Uh, this was my first flag action that I made uh, in a performance in a, in a small city in Sweden. And I was kind of doing, uh, I was doing different actions in the water. This uh, special water in the, in the middle of the city has the highest tide and uh, in the water from, from flood and, and, uh, and less water. It's, it's during three, four hours, it's like one and a half meter change. So I was trying to do stuff there. And, and, and this was my first action with a flag actually. And, and I was doing some kind of, uh, I was laying there in the, in, the, in the water until I couldn't hold it up anymore. Next, please. And what I'm constantly trying to do, what, what I really love to see myself, and that is also what I'm doing myself, trying, trying to do myself, is to transform uh, uh, an object, an everyday object, often to something else. Uh, so here I made a, a, a flag. Normally flags should be a material that can stand against the snow, wind and water and stuff like that. But here I made a flag with uh, Pinacha Times. So I, I, I put them together, I got the, I buy like eight financial times and then I can pretty fast pre-make it and do it. Um, <clears throat> we, we, was, we were also, um, not only our making our own festival, we were also making some kind of pirate festival during the Venice preview. And uh, you could kind of hide behind the big uh, crazy Biennale coming into Venice again. And so, so people are more, 
they're not, they know that, okay, now they're here again, they're dirty. So then, then we could do stuff in the street and it was very nice to, we rented a house and people, artists could, could buy a bed and then we go out in the street during the preview uh, uh, and do stuff in the street. So, so this was, I tried this, this year, that year when I made this one, uh, it was uh, some kind of European Union meeting. So there were a lot of more policemen and they stopped you and then you just, okay, okay. And then you go and then you come back and do it. Next, please. Yeah, here you can see more the, 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 the financial times and, and the, the color of it. And this is also something I like when suddenly, when I had had other flags that I've been working with, suddenly when you make a paper flag, the sound, suddenly the, the action, the performance action became also a, a sound piece for me. The audience maybe don't see it, but when I, when I was holding it, the sound of that was really remarkable. I, I, really, I really loved that. And now I'm taking a notion, record it when you come home, you're lucky. Next, please. <clears throat> Same thing here. And I, I also, I heard, I, I tried to find that story, but I heard that uh, uh, sometime in, in North of Ireland, there was some uh, uh, fighting uh, and there was this white flag was used, but the, the, the men didn't dare to do that. So, so they sent out the woman I heard to, to go with the white flag and ask for some, some um, conversation of, of uh, Negotiation. I'm, I'm, I can be wrong. Next, next, please. Here also the Swedish flag, which I've been working with a lot, uh, especially last year in the last election. I was working that. Now this, this is a, it's a happy accident that I was working with smoke, which I think is also very nice and ephemeral. Uh, and I put a, a smoke bomb on a chair. And when I throw the, the Swedish flag on it, it became a, afterwards a very strong image. When I see that how my old Sweden are kind of is, what is happening and what is going on and how, how, how come we have all these naturalistic idiots that is in, in the election in Sweden, so yeah. Next, please. Mm. And also, I like smoke because it was also some of the first way of communication. When we have distance in between people, we kind of communicate with the smoke. And uh, I like those notion we, we have it a lot in in sweden actually that you, you still have some of the big big fires that could create smoke and you put in some wet wood so that it will be make more the light is much less uh, visible in the day than the smoke so, so. and they still communicate uh, some of the Sakmi people in in up north with this next please And I'm also very interested in this, you know, um, that came very clear now during the, the COVID. We suddenly know that there's streams around us in, in um, not visual streams, uh, that, but that smoke can show how, how the, 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 the air streams are moving in a, in a room. Uh, we couldn't go up to our friends and family and hug them. And so because we had to, we know that there is streams that can, can make other people sick. So I, I was very interested in that. And, and uh, it, it, it gave me a lot of ideas, this distancing. How, how can I work with the distance if I have to continue doing that? I was also in the risk group. So it was more important for me to find some ways of working with performances. Next, please. This was the first time I actually 
uh, at Svalbard worked without any audience than the camera guy. And that was very strange for me because I, but it also learned me that it is so important to break what you normally do. So I had kind of leaned against an audience to get reaction and do stuff like that. And suddenly I, so, so I asked uh, Stein, who was is running his festival up in Svalbard, uh -huh. how do you do? And he said that, yeah, but I, I'm thinking about, uh, I'm looking at nature. I see that here is like seven mountains. Why don't you do it for them? And it sounds, uh, when he said it, it was totally clear. Yeah, that's the way to do it. But to do it for the nature was a, a new experience for me that I hadn't, um, that was very good for me. You know. Next, please. <coughs> Yeah, and and uh, we talked about. I heard. Uh, I was listening to to um, Nathan and John's talk about failure, and then this. I don't think there is a failure in performance art. I think that uh, here, for instance, I had an, an. I had. I wanted to have a parade with this burning charcoal and walk around, but I didn't think that, of course, the fire burns off the nylon ropes. So I could only walk away with one or two. Uh, so, so you could say that I didn't, my, my initial idea to walk with 10 or 12 of this basin didn't work out, but I still went with two. So I think that when you continue in something that was maybe a failure or a mistake, then the failure or the mistake becomes something else. The twin sister or twin brother. Next, he said with a demanding voice. So then I, from this, this is the base, base and I went home to, to, uh, to use. And they had this kind of the experience and the fire and the travel of these basins, very cheap basins from, from, from Sweden. I started to make art in them. So, so the, the, the object that I'm using, the material that I'm using, later on can become an, an object that I can work on because I have already started some kind of communication with the material. And this uh, nine basin, they have, me and them, we have a common uh, memory and a common experience uh, of, of uh, doing something together. Next. <coughs> so what I've done is that I, I, I have, um, come up with a way of printing on extremely, extremely thin paper, uh, like silk paper or like uh, thin, even thinner than toilet paper. So I'm printing on them and I ripping photos. Uh, the ones I can get hold of, I'm asking them what I'm doing, then I'm changing the photo. So, so um, and then I, I, I glue them. So they kind of, uh, the, the, rust and it they, they mix and marry uh, very well so this is also the way of me working and trying to to create objects that exist after the the, the action next please yeah i just wanted to throw in this because i also i'm, I'm sitting and doing a uh, work with this now but I, 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 I'm, I'm a pretty good painter, uh, if I may say so. No, but I'm a good painter, but it also becomes boring because then I need to, to do some part and I lost the interest. I didn't like what I was doing. It was too... So then I found out how to work with fire, paint with fire that I cannot really, I cannot control it. And that was interesting for me. So then, uh, accidents uh, um, come into the art in a very special way that I like. And it was also some, um, uh, I read uh, in my beginning when I went to art school, I read an essay about accident in art. And it's a Swedish uh, writer, August Strindberg, who's a drum, drama guy, and a book, famous book, Swedish book writer. He was talking about that. And then suddenly when I started to to uh, paint with fire, I suddenly invited the, the, the accident into the work. 
And uh, when I did that here, then I started also to do it in my, my performance actions. I left the room uh, uh, for accidents to, to, uh, to um, take, take form or to, to um, take place. Next. Yeah, and <clears throat> this is a performance in set uh, uh, where uh, I asked the audience to uh, choose a ball, a golf ball, and hit out in the river. Next. And the goal, golf balls had uh, faces with uh, G8 uh, presidents or ministers and stuff like that. So this was in France. Uh, so of course, uh, Sarkozy, who was the president at that time, they, they loved to hit him out. But also Bush, Bush, uh, they really hated. So, so they, they hit out uh, uh, some, some, a lot of balls with those uh, ministers. And I remember the, the first one who came was a performance artist. And, you know, I'm not a golf player, but I have checked out that you need a club that, that the, the ball don't go so long because I didn't want to kill people on the other side of the river. So I tested for a couple of times and no problem, the ball mean, uh, go up and, and go out five meters. But this performance artist, he, he hit it so hard on the, uh, on the, on the club. So the, the ball went like a torpedo over to the second floor on the other side. And I, I peed my pant uh, very, very, very fast and say, oh my God, can I really do that? But uh, then, then that was the only time it happened. But it's also showing you that you really need to test and see how it's working before you're starting to do it. Next. So then I also wanted to make, <clears throat> normally we performance artists, we are showing photos or videos and stuff. So, uh, and that is no problem with that. But then I also wanted to, to uh, make the, the artwork afterwards more special. So I, I also saved some of the material that was done. So they become, so I put up this, uh, the bag with golf balls are authentic. And the book that I drilled in France was also authentic. Uh, and then they became, uh, for me, more more uh, uh, unique because I think that is what I like with art. I want uh, the art to be unique or or um, be um, uh, be uh, uh, something more than a copy. Next, you just have to interrupt me now, uh, Brian, when I'm coming going too uh, fast or or going too long. Well, we have one question, Joachim, and it's about the okay. re the reference to um, you mentioned that you know the artists that make accidents in their art that you had a reference to something that you were looking at, mm -hmm. and uh, the student is asking, um, can you have a link or can you give them the reference to this accidents in art? Yeah, I can do that, but I need, I can't do it now. But I can yeah. I can in your um, in your I can. I can send a link to, uh, I think I also have it in English, actually. It's a short essay that is really, really, really interesting how uh, this writer, he, he didn't want to work with brushes. So he, he, he broke his brushes and then he started working with a, with a knife when he was painting because he felt that that was more, he couldn't really control that in the same way. And he was, when he was traveling, he was... Uh, uh, he was going to some island in the in the Pacific, and he loved to, to sit with the, the villager. They drilled hole in bamboo, and then they listened to new symphony every evening when the wind came. And I really like that way that you you can do something, you can throw up something, and it becomes different every time. And uh, yeah, but I will do that absolutely, absolutely. Uh, next. And as you mentioned also in the beginning there, uh, Brian, uh, this was also something that I like that I have a lot of art in my studio that just laying around and I don't know, really know what to do with it. But I, when you see people who, who really like art and maybe can't afford it, I like to, to uh, 
to do work uh, with them. So I, I took this, um, this is from France. So I was collecting this uh, uh, paper that uh, homeless people are sleeping on. And then I kind of, I have this, um, how do you say, um, mm, uh, not charcoal, but the other uh, pencil. What's the name of that? Comte. I don't know. I, I, let, anyhow, I took a, the, the cheese. Um, um, you know, when you're putting on the cheese on the pizza, you you're ripping them on something. So I was doing that with this um, this uh, pencil, uh, thick pencil. And then instead of making the drawings, I was I wanted to to uh, make the drawing just to caress caress out the outlines and. And doing so, I was putting effort to kind of, you know, not making a drawing, but caress out uh, faces on different uh, papers there. And then I, and then when you're sitting and doing your shit there, you you immediately feel when somebody's interesting and they stop and they look at you. And then I like to give it away. So so um, um, also that because I also like I'm a little bit arte povera. I like this kind of uh, uh, yeah. It's graphic, yeah, rubbing graphic. Good, thank you. I see it now. Thank you, Marta. Uh, so, so um, I, I, I'm into poor material, so to speak. I like this paper. I like to to print on, you know, this this paper that you you put around gifts and shit. Next, we can just click forward here. Uh, just go, please. I think that I'm talking too long. So I go to another part. Um, you can continue. Yeah. Uh, that this is all. Yeah, that is good. There you go. Next, please. <clears throat> so this is, I'm working in a public space because I heard, uh, we, we saw that my, my old graffiti guys, they were, hunted by police that had the guns up in the air and say stop or I'm shooting and it was really hard uh, hardcore in my city and we have this kind of uh, the people who are cleaning tags taking off the tags so that's what you see on top here on top you see the the, the people cleaning away tags which I don't like myself I don't it's not I'm protecting that but they're using very strong chemical that are are uh, making leaving this mark which are also ugly so then i started to kind of recycle so then i went over on the, on the middle row you see my first uh, uh, how i started to make something of them and the strange thing is that you don't see the middle one when people they are pretty big but people don't see it until i put white in the eyes strangely enough this is also information <laughs> that is not important Next, please. So this here, 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 that, that's the size of it. And this is also before they are done. And, and uh, also the, the color, I'm, I'm painting with acrylic because uh, in Sweden you can, the graffiti is forbidden for uh, um, uh, spray cans, which they think is eternal color. They call it in the law book. So I. Uh, me and a lawyer, we went through the, the law and was kind of interpreting. So in the beginning, when the police came, because people are calling when they see somebody, hey, somebody standing, on the side. <laughs> they, the police come and they uh, interrogate me and they say, you cannot do it. And, and, uh, and I said, yes, I can. This is public space. We have some, some public space that are allowed for us. We are, uh, I don't know if you have it here, but in between, houses you can find spaces that nobody wants to take care of because it's also a cost of holding it proper so in between houses or, or blocks of houses there is areas that you can you can do stuff on so so um, and one more question there Joachim yeah um, um, Marta I think it was asking do you have permission no I don't have permission so um, because as a citizen, I can use this area as long as I'm not changing it or breaking it. Because the acrylic, they only last for 
when the, in the beginning, when the police come, they come up and say, yeah, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm working with water-based color. And that immediately ring a bell and they think it's uh, like uh, aquarel or something like that, water, watercolor. So, and they say, so it disappears, they say. And then I said, I don't say uh, how long it takes. Yes, it disappears, I said. Then I haven't lied because every time you talk with two policemen, it's an interrogation and I'm alone. So if they say something that he said that, then I'm, I'm in the shit. So, so in the beginning, so they called, the, they have a, um, a prosecutor in the police house and he's looking for uh, the, the, the law of it. So, but then as, as long as I'm working with water-based color, in this case, it's, it's uh, normal acrylic. And it sits for one hour, one, one, uh, one year to three, four years. It stays. And I, I really like that because this is also philosophically, I really like that it's like us. I hate all these old bronze kings sitting on some big fat horse that is 500 years old. I, I absolutely think that we should melt down a lot of them and let younger artists create something new with that. But no, no. But what I'm doing now instead is that I'm calling uh, the, the 911 and I say that, OK, I'm going to paint on this place here. And then the police say, why the F are you calling us? And I said, yeah, but I'm, your colleague told me to, to call because you have to, if somebody's calling, we need to come there. And that costs money. So now I'm calling and say, I'm, I'm, we'll stand here and work on this place and, and uh, so on. And, and when the police get the call, they can look at their computer, emergency computer, and they say, okay, so, and then they call me sometimes. And so I, I can do that. But now I'm, I'm more, in my city, I'm well known, so it's, there's not so many calling anymore. But, the, 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 but I think that uh, there is an import. I'm a little bit surprised that not so many graffiti artists, spray, spray girls and spray boys are not using water-based color, because then it's another story. And also that you can find areas that nobody owes. Because I think that the law all over the world when it comes to owing stuff is very strong, protecting people who owe shit. Is that answering your question? I think it was, yes, uh, because they said um, that, that the, the answer was provided. Great, great. So this is, so I'm, I'm doing that too. So I'm uh, normally when I have time, I stay over and uh, I always have a little acrylic and uh, brushes and I go out and do a little work here. So, so uh, yeah, next please. And also to see, I also find I'm getting older, so I'm not uh, I'm not leaving the house so far. So now I take my bike and I I, I I'm more painting around our house. So uh, and sometimes it's very interesting to see how cliffs are changing in in wet weather, sun and so on to read them. Uh, and some are very easy to do. So I have learned like, like we all have we, in our different profession. Uh, you you learn something and you can do it uh, very easily and this this big head uh, took me very very few minutes actually to do and um, but but uh, I, I spent one year in Mexico and I was very hit by the the, the big heads of Mexico uh, so so I see that uh, a lot of my public art is more more heads of something and then the body is the rest of the stone. Yeah, I, I, I can continue. I have a lot of more photos. Uh, click please, if you see it. So, yeah. But it was also very interesting because I was commissioned to go to France in like 15 villages and they paid me a good fee to work and paint on, on places that they gave me. Uh, and I, I was uh, the mayor gave me a good, uh, good food and good hotel. And on the other hand, when I came back to Sweden, I always have to look over my shoulder to see if the police are coming and, and stealing my brushes and or just holding my brushes and stuff like that. So that was a very interesting uh, same thing, 
different perspective. Next. Yeah. But uh, I can, um, I can, uh, if, you, if you have any questions or something, I, you probably don't, but I can continue with this uh, until it's ending. But I, I really see that I am having some kind of, I really love material. I'm trying to find new materials all the time so I can start some kind of communication with them. And, and uh, uh, I, I, for instance, have found this silent dynamite that I want to work with. What is that? How can I use it? And can that lead into something else? So, so me and my wife, Shuya, we have a lot of... Uh, talk about that, how she started knitting. She was a knitting leak, building and stuff. And we said, how can we, is, do we want to make objects? Do we want to do that or is it enough with, with uh, uh, just making the action? Yeah, it's, it's enough making the action, but there is also something that you can, you can also think that you maybe can make an object that will also stay and can, can start some kind of conversation with, uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, the person looking at it. So I'm, that's, that's a lot what I'm doing when I, when I in between work. I, 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 I love to, to look for, to transform everyday things into something that I can use in, in my actions. Next. Yeah, it's, it goes on and goes on. So, yeah, I, I, we can continue, but you can also ask me a question if you want. Well, one, one question you kind of started to talk about there, Joachim, was, uh, you know, you've quite a rich vocabulary of objects and materials. You know, you're, you're very inventive, I think, about how you find things. Yeah, and I yeah. just wanted to ask about how you choose objects or, or you know how do you make decisions about objects and and are there political aspects to your thinking about those yeah yeah i i uh, i i think that we actually i i have an idea i have my own little theory about material. i think that we have uh, we have personal material that we many times pick up from our childhood uh I had this uh, fantastic story about uh, a, a friend. His father was uh, was a vegetable salesman, and uh, when we think, when we most of us think about the cucumber, is something fresh that you eat in salad. But for him, it's a fucking horrible thing, because his father, when he was drunk, he beat him up with cucumbers. He loved to use the cucumber. So for him, that is a, a uh, hateful, <laughs> he cannot eat cucumbers, you know. So I think that we all collect those things. And uh, he, her father was working with in the old uh, uh, um, cork industry. So when she smelled cork, when you open a wine, bottle of wine or something like that, oh, then she remember her her long gone father. So I think we all collecting materials like that, and I I'm in, interested in that. So. I, of course, uh, think that materials are both, they, 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 for me, I can only pick materials that is something for me. But I also, I'm, I'm of course aware that uh, there is some materials that is uh, carrying on some symbolics or some meaning for all of us. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm, but I'm, I'm a politically interested person. Uh, when I was a young artist, my father always said, you shouldn't force your, your uh, political aspects on it. It will come out itself. If you just paint and paint and paint and work and work and work, it will show its face. Because uh, I was making so political work that they were very boring. So I, I think it's, um, I like to talk about uh, the world and the aspects, but not in this black and white. I like the gray. <laughs> I think it should be in between those things. Is that? Uh... Yeah, that was that was good. Yes, okay. thank you, Jürgen. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, another question really is about um, 
coming to decide to start to make events, uh, what what kind of pushed you towards thinking that, you know, it was important to to kind of boost artists and and to make yeah. work in different contexts? Because I know you were involved not only in Gothenburg but also in south of France as well. And you yeah. know, just just what drove you towards thinking about making festivals and events? Yeah, no, but I, I, I uh, my brother, he was, uh, oh, he's, he's a curator. He now lives in China and stuff like that. And we work together, but he he was supposed to take over a, a crashed, totally crashed uh, a guy and a woman. They were, uh, have, have a car accident and, he, and then he took over and, uh, and had to finish this uh, Nordic exhibition. And then he went down to, he went to Helsinki and to see, because it should be five or six uh, Nordic artists from every country. And then suddenly it came 10 performance artists from Finland. Finland is a, was and is a very strong performance uh, country. And I, when, when I saw that, it was like, I had, I had my little career going. I had a gallery, I sold a little uh, things here and there. It was going pretty well, but it was also very predictable. So when I first saw performance art and I felt, I, I don't know what will happen. I fall in love. I, I was bitten by the, the action virus or, or maybe it's the art virus. Uh, all performance art are not so interesting. It can also be boring, but, but it was more this unpredictable thing. And then, then in my, me and my brother said, let's, let's see if we can do it. I mean, many times you organize something that you are missing. You are painting the paintings you want to see somehow, or the sculptures that mean something for you. So that that was the beginning, and of course our parents also. I mean that is uh, important that they they made exhibitions for the workers, and they were working class, and they were doing they were doing uh, those in a political way, of course. Yeah. Thank you. So I guess, um, you know, we can maybe just ask if the audience have any questions. And uh, if not, then we'll maybe come to an end, Jochen. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Okay, uh, all quiet on the question front. Um, so uh, Tracy McCoy says, thank you, Joachim. Very interesting ideas. Okay. Yeah, thank you. No, but it's, uh, it's always uh, the beginning of a sculpture when you're starting to think about, like you said, boy said, you know, when you start planning it, it takes shape. And that's why it's good sometimes to, to speak about uh, what I'm doing, because sometimes I really don't know what I'm doing. And that's good to... to, um, to put out some lines about where I am. So yeah, mm. it's good for me too. Thank you for having me. Okay. Well, Joachim, thank you very much for giving us of your time yeah. and sharing your work and uh, your, your kind of history of practice and, and, and showing us a little bit about events as well. Okay. And um, you know, again, sorry for the mix up at the start. No, no, no. So, um, so, uh, we're just going to finish the recording now, and uh, I hope that the recording can be made available to more students and others uh, after the event.